Um, so, so first of all, a question, a question of scope. On one of the early, uh, earlier uh, slides, you mentioned GCC in particular, but uh, what I'm reading here is also, to me, very GCC focused. Um, the steering, well, that's a bit better. Uh, the steering committee is best focused. Apparently, I was on mute, so there's no recording of that first bit. Um, yes, the, we have different processes for the different tools. Um, bin utils is probably the lightest weight. Uh, GDB may be fairly similar, um, but GCC and GLibc have steering committees. I'm not particularly involved with GLibc, but it does presumably have some sort of process. Um, but although I'm, I'm trying to cover all the projects in, in this, whilst understanding that there are necessary differences. So uh, GLibc, as far as reviewing patches and committing patches is concerned, is it's a consensus process. It's not a maintainer blessed process. So we, we don't really look for a specific maintainer to say yes or, or uh, act patches for the patches to go in. So in that sense, it's probably uh, a little more liberal than, than the GCC process, which is explicitly yes. top down in that yeah. sense. But it is a process yeah. and you still have an appoint maintainers um, uh, they're probably less component-based. So, so, the, so we have the FSF stewards, mm -hmm. of which very few are actually active in development. Uh, but yes, but, that, but that's the same with the GCC senior, steering committee. Yeah, but if you look at senior developers, they're not really blessed GNU maintainers. I think this, Carlos, you are, and who else? Joseph. Yeah, so, I mean... Process is process. Any way that you want to spin the process, you can spin the process. But um, you're, in GCC, you face a more complicated problem because there's just so much more code. And there's so much more code that we, we can fit like... And, and so much more diversity GCC in knowledge as well. GCC but yeah. In terms of number of commits and number of people involved in process, it's just bonkers. So mm. it, whatever process you come up with will be just radically different and you'll have to find a way to distribute it for GCC. Yes. A consensus review process sort of assumes at least two people looking at a patch, and with GCC, we're more we're lucky if we get one. Sometimes, you know, indeed. If, yes. if you only if you can only get one person to review your patch, is that consensus? <laughs> well, if you only get one person, you can make the argument nobody cares. Yeah, that's that's essentially what we do for GLibc. It's the lack of dissent is often content. What project I'm working on is then hypervisor. We specifically call this lazy consensus. So if nobody cares, I, I, I mean, we also require that at least one maintainer cares. So there needs to be some kind of acknowledgement of the patch. Yeah. But otherwise, if there is no other input, then this is lazily approved. And only if there is disagreement, then of I, course... I, I, want, to I want to come on to patch review. That, that's the second half of this boff. At, at the moment, it's primarily a bit, the, a bit about the maintainers themselves. Uh, yes, we have different projects and with, with different rules. Uh, Bin Utils, to some extent, has the concept of area maintainers. So you'll have a, um, somebody who knows about the ARM backend, somebody who knows about the power backend, and so on. And those are essentially devolved maintainer roles. Effectively, this lazy consensus is consensus of two people. The person who submitted the patch and the other person who also thinks it's okay. That's true, yes. It's, uh, I just wanted to clarify, for glibc, there is subsystem, people who put their name down for subsystems. Um, like, I, I think, Joseph, you've got your subsystem maintainer for the math library subdirectories, which would be the person post the patches can assume consensus and then, but then someone else can show up and be like, I didn't like that. And so then at that point, it's a... Uh, Technically, it's, that's true in GCC yeah. as well. You know, yeah. If you do a patch to the power back end and the, the general RTL maintainer steps up and says, no, you're doing something wrong, that's the same r basic rules. Most of the so, time, they just don't get involved because there's too many other patches flying around. Yeah. But it's there. 
just not exercised a lot. It's just, yeah, because generally speaking, it's assumed that the power maintainer will actually know enough to know when to ask more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're, and I, I want to just comment on your third question here. How do we encourage developers to put their names forward if they feel they have an interest in taking on reviewer maintenance activities? Um, we, uh, Maxim Kuvyakov had a fantastic recommendation uh, based on work that he'd been doing inside of the Linero teams, which was to have a reviewer pool, people who are acknowledging that they're putting their name in a pool and that when patches arrive to the list, someone's going to hand them something to review and they go and review it. And that makes a very, uh, makes a very like opaque process or a very waffly process more explicit. You mm -hmm. have kind of like, you feel like you're accountable because you agreed to the rules of the reviewer pool. And so we did it for glibc and we have a reviewer pool and every week i hand patches to people from the reviewer pool and it's been really interesting um is, is simon and the yeah. simon and arjun are both here you're both in the reviewer pool yeah. do you i would love to hear your comments on how it feels to be in a reviewer pool because i am handing you rando patches on monday morning when i do the like patch walk but not not always entirely random but here if someone can pass this back. I don't think I've been doing a good job with this. Uh, ma mainly because, yeah, but, but mainly because uh, I think a couple of times I got a patch which was in the nth version where n was like more than five. And I really didn't have the energy to go and see like what was the history behind the changes. And then sometimes I also got patches that were like a little out of my league, to be honest. So like, I'm not really confident reviewing that. It, it came to my, uh, like, like on my plate, but yeah, apart from that, I think if there's something, um, something fairly recent that's not been discussed a lot, like it's a lot easier to go through the review for it. So like it's, it's been great at some level, but I think I'm really slacking off on some of the older patches because they're hard. Yeah, I mean, patch review can be hard. Um, yes. And that's, that's why we have maintainers who are experts in their field. But I, one of the key things about being a maintainer is actually knowing when you don't know and being able to, and prepared to say, I'm sorry, I don't understand this code enough to be able to do a review on it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, though, of course, at the end of it, we, we still have to decide, or somebody has to decide, is this okay to go in? If you're a maintainer and you do not understand the code that is submitted for you to review, right? Uh, you're saying you d won't understand it because uh, you don't know that detailed whatever, right? Uh, but it should at least always be explained in such a way in the pet submission, whatever, the, me the message or whatever. Yes, yes and no. I mean, take, for example, the, the vectorizer in the AOT64 port. I know but, but that you, part of it I know very little about. I'm still an AOT64 maintainer. Sure, sure, but you should at least, for any pets, know what it is about, although you're not the subject matter. Uh, that at least you know uh, who else to kick off. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. knowing who to ask is, is also part of that job. Right. Nick. Um, so, uh, yeah, for context, I am not a GFC maintainer, but I am part of the reviewer pool. Um, and... I actually think it's a great idea uh, because I'm, I don't get the opportunity to actually write a lot of code for the GPC. So reviewing is a great way for me to actually get to know the code base. Mm -hmm. But one problem we have, and I have, is that we don't have a firm commitment on a time frame. Mm -hmm. And that means that I've had uh, quite a bit of work this summer. Uh, and so I, every time I was, yeah, uh, so the GDPC patch review, yeah, I'm going to do that later. In uh, three months in, I have patches uh, 
that I've been assigned three months ago that still I still haven't looked at. Uh, my apologies if people in here are one of the others. If you didn't review it, I don't think anybody would have reviewed it anyway. <laughs> We're no worse off, but no better off. <laughs> but for context, you are in Canonical working on GLC and GLC packages, right? Yes. Uh, so uh, um, to repeat for the yeah, I am uh, the current maintainer of GLC in Ubuntu for Canonical. So that that's uh, my job, which is a packaging job, not a developer job. Uh, which means I get to read a lot of patches, not so much yeah. writing them. So if you review code and it goes in and then breaks stuff in Canonical, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. By the way, <laughs> uh, Nick had a question at the, or a comment at the back. Sorry for hiding the back. Um, I actually wanted to address your first topic about uh, inactive maintainers. I have a suggestion that uh, why doesn't the steering committee or someone on it once a year, or the chief maintainer for projects that don't have a steering committee, send out an email to all the known maintainers saying, are you still happy to be a maintainer? Are you carrying on? If the email bounces back, you know they've gone. If it comes back saying, no, thank you, I've done enough, you can take them off. And if they come back saying, yes, I'm happy, great. But if, if you're proactive and you actually say, hey, want to carry on? Is once a year in, uh, often enough? Well, you don't want to spam. It's, you, it's you better than none, <laughs> I agree. But, you know, waiting a year for your patch to re be reviewed because it's fallen in a black hole is probably not very good either. Yeah. Um, yes, we probably do need to, to have a more proactive purge. Um, and in some areas where there's not a lot of activity, you can't necessarily tell that that maintainer has gone inactive. Sourceware has started removing commit bits from people who aren't committing, but I'm not sure that information has really fed back into seeing if those people want to be listed as maintainers anymore. That's also true, yes. Um, I, yeah, I just want to... So, um, should we send a... a uh, that's interesting. So, where would I send a list of disabled accounts that match entries in the maintainer file? To their software.org address? Didn't, didn't, didn't formally the, the commit access, was, it wasn't that divided into like groups, or so you had access to source or access to GCC, and you basically sent to the respective lists? But you, you've also got the email address or the internal software email address, which is supposed to reflect to wherever they are currently. And if it's not working, then essentially they're inactive, or at least not following yeah. the rules. Uh, yeah, so I'll... I'll... Mm. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, uh, individuals approve accounts and... Uh, Often, if accounts are so old that uh, they get disabled, the approver is also gone. But, but the disabling that you do, is it global and cross Global. It's global, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it's, um, it's probably people with SSH monkeys, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but yes, probably we should send to project lists which accounts uh, have been disabled because the accounts still exist. I'll figure something out. I think Romana had a comment. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, th this, is, this is an interesting one. You know, uh, the Roger, make your comment. <laughs> oh, no, I was uh, more than happy to the Richards to, ca to carry on. But yes, I, I'm one of the people that fall into that interesting category of uh, uh, other things in life came up and I, I, I moved away from being a, uh, you know, a, 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 a back-end and middle-end maintainer 
and sort of re-emerged a decade later and realized it's a, a slow and arduous process to go through the, the re-establishing trust and confidence and, uh, and, and, and bootstrap. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's a place for an inactive maintainers list. Um, and what's more, that if you're in that and you come back to the community, this props, we should have a route for accelerated re readmission. Um, it's difficult, right? If you're out of the code base for more than a year, there's probably a, a lot that's moved on that you have to pick up. Depends on the components, but uh, yeah, the code is changing all the time and you need to stay fairly active. So there's a few parts to this. So um, when Sourcebest started doing the deactivation of accounts, that was sort of inspired by our policy in Gen2 of how we do retirement. Uh, it used to be called Undertakers, but we decided to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> a bit too morbid here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a few things you have to trade off. Uh, we don't do a particularly good job on our end of helping people come back. Like We don't have that accelerated process for coming back, and we find that that puts people off a lot. So you sort of email people sometimes, and you say, oh, are you still interested? And they say, well, yeah. And then they don't actually do anything. But they don't say yes or no. <laughs> yeah, but they're so, sort of, uh, they're so sort of put off at the idea of having to go through the equivalent of the steering committee and so on, that they, mm. they sort of they give a non-committal answer, right? So that's one part. <laughs> and then the other part is, uh, you know, you don't want it to be seen as a punitive thing. Uh, I, absolutely, it's not a punitive it's thing. It's not a punitive thing. I, it, it's about actually keeping the projects moving forwards yes. because inactive maintainers essentially are blocking other developers, yeah. um, particularly no. when you're waiting a response and nobody else knows or is prepared to pick up a, 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 a task. Exactly. So, you know, even if we sort of just, even if we just in the maintainers file, just like shift them down a bit or have a tag net, like an asterisk, or whatever to say. I, I, would, I would have a section that is currently yeah. inactive. I would say that's an and improvement that on the status quo. Yeah. So, if we have multiple maintainers, if we start uh, nominating more maintainers and reviewers, uh, does inactive maintainers, the, the issue of in, inactive maintainers remain a, a problem at all? Like if you have more maintainers, uh, inactive ma maintainers staying in there. People come, active. people go. Yeah, we have to accept that people's careers move on. No, as in, yeah. uh, what, I'm, what I'm essentially asking is, shouldn't we focus more on how to get ma more maintainers on board than to how, uh, than how to uh, no, no. mark them in action. Yes and, yes and no. One of the things is that you're less likely to get volunteers if there's a, if there's a clear list of maintainers. Yeah, because... I, I think it really needs to be both ways. Yes. The, oh. because, um, you can also have too many maintainers for the very same area. Agreed. Because they yeah. can all disagree and then you halt everything as well. Three maintainers, four opinions. <laughs> or more. The... The other wrinkle in this is like, are you an inactive maintainer if you have a thousand unreviewed patches in your subsystem, but you're still committing? No, to you're probably subsystem? just overwhelmed if you if you are res responding, but slowly. I'm, I'm just saying it's like, is I think Richard and I were here really early this morning, Beaner, and we were having this conversation, and I was like, who's accountable for patch review? And he said, nobody. Right, and I said, "Well, but that's not true because you kind of you make yourself accountable because you're involved and you're and you're doing something and you you want to get something accomplished." So the the question is like, are there any definitions? What does it mean to be a maintainer? What is it? What like good question? What does it mean for that patch queue to be really big and you're just not like you're ignoring it and then going and working on some other thing you're looking in the subsystem, right? Because that can happen, right? Yeah. And I, the, I'm, not that the I'm conscious that I am not a perfect maintainer, but yeah, yeah I, I try to keep on top of the ARM stuff. But we'll come on to the, you know, the other side of maintenance, which is actually being able to mm. manage the, the list of activities that you've got when you're trying to do a thousand other things. Yeah. But then if you're, if you're a maintainer of a subsystem that has a thousand patches pending, it means that there are, there, there are problems. developers yeah. who are prolific in that area, yeah. which means that Why there are other maybe? candidate maintainers in there as well. Because it takes too long to get through to... the steering committee. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, yeah, that's... No, I'm being a bit facetious, but I mean, yes, there are. And 
But that you will also find, though, that there are some developers who have no interest in doing maintenance. They can be very prolific, but you approach them and say, are you prepared to maintain this component? They say, no. And that's, that should be fine. Would, would the but answer, somebody has to be able to do that. Would, would the answer be different if you asked the question, are you willing to help review patches, instead of saying, are you willing to be a maintainer? Because they're, they're too... They're, well, they're too I mean, different. at that level, we don't really have a distinction, at least in GCC, right? Yeah. You're a maintainer if you're reviewing patches. <laughs> We do, have, we do have reviewers, but the, the definition of a reviewer is that they can review other people's code, but not their own. So it doesn't solve the problem that they're a prolific uh, contributor. In GCC, the definition of what is a maintainer is everyone who is in the maintainer's file is a maintainer. That is the definition. And that doesn't mean so much because everyone is in that file, everyone who is allowed to commit, right? At all. So, yeah. There's a separate section which is right after. Of course, of course, of course, of course, yes. Yeah. Any final comments before we move on? Yeah, but that, actually, that's often the least useful part of. It's. A, well, the, the most important part of a review, I would say, is providing constructive feedback to the developer as, as to what's needed. Yeah, it's very easy to go through a patch and say, this semicolon's on the wrong line. This, this double ampersand should be on the line after, at the start. That is trivial, is boring, and it's, it's actually a destructive review, not a constructive one. Yeah, but for, for new contributors, it's, it's the most disheartening part of, my patch has been picked apart, but actually, once, once I've done all that, the person then asked me to go and rewrite it because it's, you know, it's done something more fundamental. It should really be the last part of the review, not the first. Two more. I think here first. No, three ball. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we have to we have to be prepared to take some risks. So if you're doing both there, 
please try to make sure these kind of decisions are there. I mean, maybe not based on this topic, but one like that will sort of set rules. And you know, that could help people you know, who want to do the job, which is from an argument of you, that could help them feel a bit more confident that uh, they're not uh, in the wrong, you know, in something wrong. I do have to say that documentation and test cases are probably more important than the part of the package that actually affects the new feature. And I'll start by looking at those, what's the feature supposed to be, do the test cases come with it, do the integrated behaviors as expected before looking at the code. Of course, to some extent, maybe we'll get to this later, automated processes could possibly detect a speaker that fails to document new features, fails to include any test cases. Regarding the last item, basically how to get random people to review random patches. Um, and we did discuss this years ago. I think I brought it up back then, and other projects are doing it. Uh, use rewrite, uh, review by uh, Kips uh, lines in, in the Git log. Uh, we turn this into a kind of a game um, to give, or then you can produce after a year a number of this person. You, you can get kudos points or something, yeah. Mm. I mean, it's kind of stupid, of course, but uh, people no, are... You, you it would be better if there was a slightly more automated way of doing that, but... Uh, because, as we know, reviews take a ton of time. Am mm. I learn a lot in that, but... Yeah. yeah. Time is fast. Anyway, um, we must move on, uh, because actually I think the next section is probably even more con controversial. <laughs> someone who's reviewed and given some useful comments, but they are not asserting this patch is now ready to include. Well, there's reviewed by and act by, I think, at the kernel levels. Uh, reviewed by essentially is, this is ready to go in. Act by means I've looked at this and I haven't seen a problem. I think that's the, the distinction they have. Yeah. yeah. That's still not reflect early comments. So, so I mean, yes. I, I, yeah. I don't know. In GCC, it's not going to be different than uh, in any other larger project. The, these Actions can take dozens of versions until they. Absolutely yes. I mean, the, the first version. But these tags are just that; comments. they are tags. Um, I don't think there's any reason why we couldn't invent others if it if we felt there was a genuine need for it and and something to be gained by doing it. Um, anyway. We've only got 20 minutes left, and I'm now moving on to the controversial bit. Um, hands up if you remember when email was all plain text. <laughs> oh, it was only plain text, I should say. <laughs> Keep your hand up if you remember the days before web browsers. <laughs> Were you ever jealous that a colleague received more email than you? <laughs> And do you remember the days when official office memos were printed out on paper and sent round the room? <laughs> I was going to say to Jeremy, he needs to keep put his hand down. He's not that old. <laughs> no, seriously, email, it sucks. <laughs> it does, it sucks. <laughs> There's too much of it, right? Because it's free, we get inundated with it. GCC patches, 2,700 messages last month alone. If I spent five seconds triaging each of those, that's four hours. If everybody in my team at work did the same thing, that's a lost week. It's bonkers. No, but that's just working out which, which patches I'm interested in from those 2,700. It's not responding to them and dealing with them. It's just getting rid of the dross because there are so many of them and most of them are irrelevant. Now, I can use filters. That might help a bit, but um, I already do um, extent of that and I still drown in email. Um, modern email clients have made it very, very difficult to do plain text. 
you, that argument went out 20 years ago. Sorry, it's gone by on a bus. It's not the way email has gone. You can, you can rile about it, but it's a bit like, um, you know, sort of saying that the, the, the horse-drawn cart was the best way of, of pulling, pulling things around. It's, it's a past argument. We've lost it. Email, email is a broken transport mechanism for this. Let me, let me move on. The thing is that corporate policies have broken all of this. There's nothing that we can do. It's a pointless fight. We have lost. Seriously. Email tools can corrupt patches, or, or e the email delivery system can corrupt patches. I have seen um, email servers that delete blank lines arbitrarily in plain text. It's just, it doesn't work. Then you get the things like disclaimers being added, security policies that, you know, we have a system at work called Tessian that goes through and says, have I seen this person before? If not, I'm going to write all things like, be careful, this was an external poster all over the message. Um, and they claim to remove it, but don't because they only remove it if you're using a particular email client system. <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> I was going to say there's a generational thing here, which is I was suddenly felt very old when one of our interns basically said, yeah, email. That's the, that's the thing you use as a bootstrap to get accounts on the different websites. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's all they yeah. use the, the, the generation coming up use it for, as far as I can tell, is it's this weird legacy thing that you it, need it, in, it's, order, it's, in order It's to ancient, get it's broken, it's had its day, and yeah. as a patch, it, I mean, it's, uh, using email to send patches is a bit like trying to use um, UDP um, protocols to, to transfer files. Right? And then, then complaining when the person doesn't receive the full file and saying, you need to upgrade your internet speed. <laughs> right? It's the wrong solution. It worked because we didn't have anything better in the day. I might but it is that. not the right solution anymore. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> then we need to find something better. I might add that uh, my entire university probably has only one person doing an email-based patch workflow, and that's me. Yeah. Uh, I've not seen it among the teacher generation, among the younger or new Absolutely. professors, and definitely not even a single student. Most yeah. of these people don't use reply all when replying to threads of many people. So I, would, I do not expect relying on email is going to work for yeah. long. It, it's, it's the wrong solution. To, it's a 1980s solution to this problem. Seriously, uh, <laughs> we, we can dream of times past, yeah. but the truth is GCC uh, GCC has been running for 30 years or more. Um, I know it's all more because I've been doing it for 30 years. But the truth is I'm nearer to retirement now than I am to the beginning of my career. Yeah. And we're still using the same processes that we were 30 years ago for sen sending patches in. I, I, I... No. <laughs> No, it proves that 30 years ago we had nothing better, but it doesn't prove anything else. Uh, I mean, the, if I... I told you I was going to don a flame suit before I came in here, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so, the real, so the real problems are things like patchwork can't cope, right? They only pick up... A, a percentage of the passage, passage, patches sent to them because there's too much variation in what goes through. They lose things. They don't thread things properly because email clients thread things in different ways. Blaming the person posting it is like shooting the messenger who sent the king the, you know, the thing from the other king. It's... <laughs> no. Problem buried. It's a different one. <laughs> um, in, in terms of... So, the, but the point is that things like CI that hang off patchwork don't work properly because they're hanging off patchwork, which is hanging off a broken email system. Fine. That's because we have a call every Monday okay. to triage. Okay. And, to make sure and do you go through and manually check yeah. that everything that was posted to the list appeared in patchwork? <laughs> I, 
Yeah. 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 Ye
when we've noted correctly that email sucks, I should also note that the web sucks and web browsers suck. <laughs> and that's especially the case if you're dealing, say, with a large queue of things. So say I've been away for a couple of weeks and now have thousands of GC, CNG, Libsy patches and comments on patches to get through. Well, that works very well in email, going through them. It takes a while, but that can be done efficiently. But now, if you've got a web page that lists thousands of separate items, it, large web pages make browsers very slow. In practice, well, things like GitHub notifications only give you a handful on one page, and then you need to go through a huge number of pages for what it thinks you should be notified about. Um, well, I've certainly easily exhausted GitHub rate limits. OK, there are these 20 things I'm looking at. Middle click them to open them in new tabs. Oh, GitHub's decided I'm clicking on too many things at once and encountered a rate limit. So I, we, we should certainly think... I certainly think the, we should the biggest something. problem, I think, with email is, is that I can't see, without reading the email thread, whether, a, whether an issue has been closed out. Right? Yes, I, it, it's for live forever until I've gone through and deleted it myself. If somebody else has closed it, I can't tell. Personally, I want it to be live. I want it to be live for me because I may still have other comments that might. You can still be you can still go. You can still go and look at old issues. So that's a dis That's a, I, I want to make follow my own rules for deciding is something live for me, which may be different from the rules you want to follow. So one thing I think is certainly relevant for forges is, do they have a good way of getting a local feed of all the things on which you can apply your own logic, go through it efficiently, decide what is live for you, rather than just... Cer certainly, I, I haven't used GitHub, I haven't used GitLab, not in anger anyway, I've dabbled with them on a couple of occasions. Um, I have occasionally used Garrett under protest. I, personally, I hate it. I, I find the, the, the UI complete marmite. Yes. And, um, so then another thing where also the web sucks is search. Because in practice, well, if I want to find some past GCC patch, I find it a lot easier to find it by grip or by mailboxes rather than trying to persuade Google to show a particular no, thing for GCC. Nobody, nobody is going to suggest that we shouldn't send copies of yes. patches to ma a mailing yes. list, the right? These are criteria for evaluating these things. Absolutely, so yes. I, I'm talking about why the web sucks and what we might deduce about criteria that we can use to evaluate things that would be good transitions from email. Because email has plenty of disadvantages, but search is one good thing. I have a lot of email. I have about 100 gigabytes of archived email over 29 years in 15,000 folders, and I can search them reasonably effectively with grep. Obviously, I have far too much email to host the talk. Absolutely, you have email. far too much email. <laughs> Now, that's a large portion of the email is, of course. Can we, let, can we let the person back there have a comment as well, please? Behind, behind you. So um, I wholeheartedly agree with Joseph, and I wanted to add, try all the web stuff on the mobile phone, on the mobile phone doing a commute. And you will notice it sucks even more. Um, so I think I, I have a, a slightly different perspective from most people here because um, mostly the only reason I use email uh, is to review, I use email for development is to review GDPC patches. That's the only time I actually look at code in my email client uh, because I, in, I, I kind of, you know, uh, I started de uh, development at the same time GitHub started. So I grew up with that. And even though I love my current experience reviewing code from the mailing list, it's only because I had to write a lot of patches to my email clients, uh, you know, uh, to uh, a new of plugin, so on, to actually get an experience uh, that's comfortable to me. As in, you know, I can actually see the context in which the, the diff is, not just the three lines before and after, but more than that. And that's something that, a web UI gives you, and most people here are uh, are probably contributors, long-time contributors of of the new project. So you all have your your scripts, your habits. We don't.
second system to the side and also keep the keep the and that's possibly a little of the way forward, but it is the version of version of the last two systems. It is the version. Okay. So <laughs> what would you decide to do? Well everything here is fine for um, people who are the office position of but all of it is also not useful at all. Okay, yeah. All we lost, we lost time because of this. All systems do not have the basic features you need. We lost a lot of time because of that photo. So. Of course it does. It d what? Uh, just echoing some parts of what Joseph said. Uh, well, the parts I understood. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I work on GDB, and a couple of years ago, uh, we tried to switch to Garrett. And um, I, back then, I do, we do lots of review work. And in that period, <coughs> I felt completely lost because um, as a maintainer, I want to be on top of everything that's happening even if like, uh, I'm not reviewing that patch, I want to see what you know, the co-maintainers are, are doing, following, staying on top of the project. And um, email gives you that in a very neat way because email is threaded. And, and you have the top, like, and in GDB we do something that I'm not sure the other projects do, is we do a lot of patch series with a cover letter. That's very typical in GDB. So you see lots of 20 patches series. And then, and, then, and then conversations spread from one patch and then you know, do a proper tree of the discussion. And if you disappear for a couple of weeks on vacation or a month and then go back, you just look at your email client, you, see, you look at the threads in the tree view, and you get a really good sense of what's happening, what's been discussed, you know, the topics of the, of the patches, it's very easy to just at a glance, a glimpse and see that. With Garrett, that period, I suddenly, and someone who's very active and responsible for reviewing patches, I completely got lost. I really got, was very frustrated because uh, notifications are pretty much flat. There, there is no tree in the discussions. There's like uh, one root email for the start of the patch and then uh, comments to that patch will be threaded under that email, but it's not a thread, it's just flat. And now, instead of seeing, you know, 20 different patches, a patch series being discussed, you see 300 patches, 300 comments all mixed up, and you, you, you lose track of, well, I lost track of what's really going on. I, I was so frustrated that I thought, if this continues, I will not be able to do what I, you know, maintenance work. Uh, we're running out of time, unfortunately. Um, I wasn't going to make any strong proposals today in this area. I do think we need to do some real investigations to find out what alternatives might exist. Um, I'm, I'm trying to wrap up, sorry. <laughs> we ran out of time. Um, I would suggest that we go and look at Forgeo. Um, I did actually knock up something briefly on a VM at work. Um, I even got it so that it would pick up the Git, uh, sorry, the, the PRs and point to our existing Bugzilla. It's quite customizable. Um, you can make the wiki part point to our existing wiki, so we don't have to change any of that. I think we need to go and do some investigations. Find out, well, find out what's missing. Find out, does it scale? Find out what, whether it's secure enough. It should be. If it's not, we can, can report these things. Find out whether it works for us. I know not everybody will be happy, but not everybody is happy anyway, because email sucks. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of my talk. Thank you.